And now, Deep Thoughts with Blossoming Sun and Jess Plan. Why does Hollywood love astrology so much? It's because they're all obsessed with the stars. <laughs> that's pretty good. This is a pretty good one. I like that one. Thanks. That's pretty. Oh, that's, thanks. I'm glad you clever. approve. Hey, all, I, all I all I want is your coffee. validation. That's all <laughs> I want. <laughs> you just this is literally like you just pitching all your jokes to me so you can like perform the perfect stand up just for me. Like, <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm a private comedian, a comedian for money. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that there there could be such a thing? Like you tailor that would a be stand amazing. Up just to one you just person. open up your closet and just give Jimmy Carr like five bucks and then be like, get back in there. <laughs> oh get back in there. Oh. <laughs> well, good day to everyone. I'm blossoming sun. Cool. Oh. And I'm just playing. Today we're we're talking about um astrology and how yeah. why why people love it so much. And also uh, so wait, wait. First off, before we before we really delve in too deep, have you ever been super interested in astrology? No. Okay. I am not starstruck. Okay. Sadly. Dope. So, and I I had that feeling about you. So what I did was, well, okay, let's back up a little bit. Uh, originally, Jess was going to get a toe reading, and. Yes. The most majestic that of all did not astrological readings. It it did not pan out. I was pan out. It it just didn't happen. Uh, I gave the woman it money, ble- and she just left it lying there on the ground. Um, so the toes will be untoed. She, <laughs> she was the fifth piggy that went running home. Yeah, she ran. She ran straight all the way home. So I took my money back. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then I decided, um, well, maybe Jess has never had her, <laughs> what they call the natal astrological birth chart interpretation. So it's essentially taking your birth date and your birth time and where you were in the world when you were born and taking all those pieces of data into account to figure out where was each planet and where was the sun and where was the moon in the sky in relation to earth because obviously like a big pizza pie like a big pizza pie that's That's astrology that's astrology oh that should have been the title of the episode that's so (laughs) good you always end up like regretting i know life is hard okay jessica all right it's fine there's just better things. Is that going to be, is that part of my natal chart? Because that's accurate as hell. Life is hard. <laughs> <laughs> I could probably well, give you. Uh, so, okay. So anyways, we ended up not being able to do the toe thing. So now we're doing this astrology reading, which is still cool. Uh, because my family, my mother wa- is and, and was, especially when I was younger, very much into astrology. Uh, very spiritual, very much like a, she's the child of a bunch of hippies. So Mm -hmm. she is very much, she used to have this giant book. Like it was so big and so heavy that I couldn't pick it up until I was like eight years old. It was huge. It was crazy. And it had a full answer of like all the things that I'm going to read you today for your particular birth chart because I have gathered the data on Jess and I'm going to read it to her. I'm going to give it to her. Um, Yes. That's wrong. X is going to give it to you. But yes. So her book was literally like everything on a couple of pages for each day of the year. So depending on what your birthday was, it would give you this whole page just about you. And then the next page would be like individual things that were unique for like the past hundred years. So if you were born in 1971 or 1965, whatever, it would give you more detail on the next page. So she had this huge book just for birthday astrology stuff. It was crazy. Bitches are cray. That is pretty intense. It is. So we're going to, I'm going to read you yours. 
And we'll see what you think about it. So this guy, okay. So <laughs> this guy is really sweet and extremely attractive. Okay, all right. Well, I'm already interested. <laughs> and, um, let's let's just do like a little shout out to him. Let me let me. Did you get Norman up. Reedus to do my nail? Oh my <laughs> god, that would be amazing. <laughs> no, his name is Nadav. Nadav. Aww. He's got this fabulous beard. And quite an excellent haircut. It's like an undercut. It's very nice. It's like my husband's. Um, Is he like a sexy lumberjack? I guess so. But he's not like really buff. Like he has like a swimmer's body. Anyway, it's not the point. Why are we talking about that? That's not important to the thing. (laughs) So I just want to read you. I want to read you his little um, blurb that he wrote to me. He thought that I was you. Okay? I didn't want to explain that I was getting Aww. it from my friend, but I want to read you what he wrote Honestly, you. okay, I would prefer you were me too. So, Stop. I'm good with <laughs> <laughs> He also has a free ebook called Letting in Abundance and How It Can Transform Your Life. So, you, there you go. Anyways, Check it out. let me read you his whole thing. Alright. Okay. It says, It was a pleasure to connect with your energies today, Jessica. I hope this reading resonates within you. It sheds some light on your path and makes it easier to let go and trust what's coming. You are loved always. And it was like, thank you again, love and light, Nadav. He's really hot. Anyways, dope. So I just, I mean, I'm glad I let my energies connect with them then. Yeah. Usually I ask that you take me out to dinner before. Right? And so I paid for your birth chart. Thank you. But then I also got you a personal reading from him. So he essentially got your birth chart together. And because I could have done that by myself, I could have actually there's like a website that you can go to if you literally just look up like astrological, astrological birth charts, you can put your stuff in but I don't really trust that shit. I mean, I guess he put your stuff in. But that's fine. Like now it's on his computer and not your computer. So like now they don't have it data wise from me. I don't know. Anyways, um, I don't know if anybody's like the FBI is not going to be able to use that unless you're like being investigated by Mulder. (laughs) <laughs> like, I think you're good. Okay. So I got like a personal <laughs> reading. Like he interprets your chart from. Yeah. So he read the whole thing and then he wrote me a 500 word essay on your life. I'll see what the grade, the letter grade so he gets is. I, I'll see. It's for, is it going to be a C? We'll see. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to read well, I mean, you. if he's tracking, maybe it'll be a D. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a D. A. <laughs> so I will tell you what all of yours are. Uh, but I'm just okay. going to go through three of the traits because, like, I'm going to... Really, those are the only three that are, like, super important. Um, well, there's there's kind of, like, the first four are important. But I'm not going to read you your Mercury sign. It's not, like, super important. Uh, and... The reason why it's not super important is because Mercury sign, your your mercurial sign, relates to communication. And I feel like people are going to get that already from the podcast. They're going to kind of understand what that's about. So yeah. um, I'm going to read you your sun sign, your moon sign, and your Venus sign. Your Venus is social stuff and like relationships. Your moon sign and your sun sign are kind of like, if you, okay, did you did you do any research on astro- astro- astrology and like science? Yeah, and like I've read about it before. A few of the writers that I really like, like Yates uh, and uh, Ferdinand Pessoa, were big into astrology. Interesting. So I know a little bit about it. I also just read a book called The Luminaries, which was a murder mystery, and it had all about us. <laughs> it was divided into like astrological symbols and stuff, and the characters really were influenced by like certain things that were happening so i had to i had to research a little bit for that was so someone I know a an extreme aries <laughs> i just wanted to know <laughs> that is true yes yeah so okay Actually, they were um there's the sun sign and the moon sign and then yes. your venus sign there's also like your your rising sign your ascendant sign um yeah i will tell you 
that <laughs> I have had my birth chart read to me before by a person that does it professionally as well. And the only thing that you need to know that's really important is that your Pluto is in Scorpio. And let me tell you, that brings you good sex life. That's all that I know <laughs> automatically. Like, I can tell you what your Pluto is your sex life. And that's it, right? So that's like your sexuality. Well, that's your sex life. That is like you, like Pluto being in Scorpio means that your li your sexual life is better than average. So I don't know if that I, means that most people have a really shitty sex life because my Pluto is also in Scorpio, but hey, I'll take it. I mean, it. you know, you know Shatokan's personality, so that's all. <laughs> I've never seen his penis. I don't know what this is all like. Anyways, no, it was like anyway, it was a joke about the fact that he's he's gruff. That was a, that was a joke. Well, now anyway. I know that your sex life is gruff because that's what you now used to everyone does. Him. <laughs> that's true well oh do you want me to share something equally as, as does pe do people not use gruff as like abrasive anymore like rude uh is that not are a thing? you saying that I your sex that life is rude my 19 no i was saying that he's like his personality is terrible that was a joke <gasps> okay <laughs> his personality is terrible that's why the sex but is that's so a joke that, right but... that's a joke that his but personality I'm... is terrible I don't. A uh, lady, a uh, lady doesn't screw and tell. <laughs> okay. Or, or gruff and That's tell, say, as it right? would be. Gruff and tell. <laughs> gruff and tumble. All right. We're not talking about my gruff and tumble today. <laughs> okay. So now I'm curious. So I, if I remember correctly, and I'm not positive about this. So rising signs are how others perceive me, right? Or is so, that wrong? So I will explain. Your sun sign. Okay is in Cancer. So that was when the sun yeah. was in the sky. It was in the constellation of Cancer. And essentially, your sun sign is how others perceive you. That is your okay. direct personality is what they call it. I'm going to sound really fucking like, ooh, that's my, that's my sound for hippies. <laughs> I don't oh, know that's, that's ghosts. <laughs> Um, and not all ghosts are Spiritual, hippies, and vice versa. Yeah, but a lot of ghosts are hippies, and more hippies are becoming ghosts every day. So, <clears> I'm <throat> glad you didn't, I'm just saying I'm glad you didn't direct paranormal activity, where it's just like, ooh, <laughs> oh my god, I think we have hippies, like. <laughs> I don't think that sound has ever played in paranormal activity, thank you very much, I've seen it, okay? It's true. True. <laughs> so, that's your sun sign, that's how others perceive you. Or how you think others perceive you. Then oh, okay. your moon sign is how... It doesn't mean that it's the opposite. It means that it's how you see yourself or how you think okay. your personality truly. It's your quote-unquote true self. Does that make sense? I'm so glad I'm not your, mooning others. Right. And so you have your direct self, which is how others perceive you. And then your true self, how you see yourself. So... After yeah. that, then we have your Venus, which is your social, essentially like how your relationships happen. Are they mostly positive? Are they mostly negative? Whatever. How you act in relationships. You also have your Mercury, mm -hmm. which is what I was talking about, communications. Um, then you have like your Mars sign, your Jupiter sign, your Saturn sign, your Uranus sign, <laughs> your Neptune. And then your Pluto is in Scorpio. That's all that matters. Okay. Um, and then you have your rising sign. I don't actually know what rising signs are. You're a Taurus ascendant. Which. Okay. Uh, the way that it's described is you are tactile and opportunistic. I don't know. Tactile and opportunistic. I don't know. I don't know. So maybe I'll. What the? Maybe I'll read that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you your sun sign your moon sign and your Venus. And then maybe we'll scroll okay. down and see how much there is in the rising sign. Um, because you'll see. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the sun, the sun sign, which is cancer. Right. Well, do you know anything about people that are cancers? Like, is there any stereotypes? I will say there's some stereotypes I mean, I hear about Libras. No. Um... It's one of those things where I've heard a little bit about it. I've it's like all generalizations. Oh, so I've of course. heard they're like moody, more introverted, indoorsy people, like 
that kind of thing. Interesting. Um, uh, like I've, I've, the last thing I read, it was kind of like a, I think it was, it was some kind of horoscope, but it was like, you enjoy being outside, but not all the time. It was very like one of those, <laughs> like back and forth where it's like, you really like hanging out with people, but you also like being alone. And I'm like, <laughs> that kind of everybody? Um, all of them? yeah, I think people equally value their alone time and their social time, right? Now, oh, yeah. unlike was... a lot of people who are in introverts, I actually don't get anxious over going to events. I always look forward to them. Unless yeah. it's like a fucking doctor's appointment, right? So, like, most of the time, when there's a party going on, I look forward to the party. It's never like, oh, I hope everyone's gonna like me. I don't really give a shit if people like me. I'm at that age where I don't give a shit about many things. So, <laughs> congratulations to me, I guess. Um... There's, like, generalizations, not about all of the signs, the astrology signs. For instance, the reason why I mentioned Aries. My husband is an Aries. Aries are known for being extremely extra. What I mean by that is they do crazy shit. Like, <laughs> I am a Libra. Libras are known for being indecisive and, like, not extra. I don't normally do crazy shit, but like one time my husband saran wrapped his friend's car. So his friend had to cut through all of the, the saran wrap. He literally used three <laughs> rolls of saran wrap to close, to shut that car and close. Like it was on the windshield. It was like he, this man had to use a knife to cut through the saran wrap just to get inside his car. But then he had to take all the saran wrap off because he couldn't drive. Bitch is crazy. That's, Bitch is crazy. That's pretty. That's pretty funny. <laughs> and the thing is, the sad thing is, I just wanted to ask your husband next time I see him, how do you use saran wrap so effectively? Because I try to like saran wrap a sandwich, and it's like all over my hands, my body. It's clinging to itself. I want you to know, he doesn't ever use saran wrap in real life. Like, he doesn't use it for the... Well, it's the, a one and done. <laughs> when you've peaked. <laughs> when you, once you saran wrap a car, why even use saran wrap anymore? What's the yeah, point? If it's it. not a car, what's the point? I could see exactly. him. I could see him doing that. I'm surprised you're not an Aries identifying. That's fucking crazy. That's such a waste of time. Oh my God, I can't even imagine doing that. <laughs> I'd be like... <laughs> Like, I've pranked people before, but it's, like, quick things. Things that don't really waste yeah. my time. It's fine. But there's other... I'm not really a pranker, but I will enjoy a good prank. Mm -hmm. I will laugh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He adores them. It's, like, one of his favorite things. He's a fucking crazy person. So, there's other stereotypes. Like, Geminis are known for being, quote-unquote, two-faced. Um, so, Geminis are literally right before you. They're born right before Cancers. So, it's Gemini and then Cancer. Yeah. Um... And then Virgos are known for being very orderly, very organized, very kind of like on the border of OCD. And that's my mom. Uh, but there's really not like anything stereotypical about Pisces or Cancer that I've heard. There might be other stereotypes in different circles of, of things like that. But all I know is that Libras are known for being indecisive, which is not true of me anymore because I've worked on that shit. Because I used to read that giant fucking book my mom had. And it was like, Libras are indecisive and cannot make up their minds. And I was like, I'm going to fucking stomp that shit out. Because I will not be what this book says I am. But it, you, I used to be that bitch that was... Have you ever seen that notebook gif? The gif of the notebook oh, yeah. where he's like, where do you want to go eat? And she's like, I don't know. That's That was me. Forever. <laughs> For, like, the first 25 <laughs> years of my life. And then I was like, I should probably stop being this fucking Libra bitch. I need to calm down. And just make decisions. Now I do that. Now now I'm not a Libra. I've risen above it. So, let's read what sun and cancer means. This this sounds terrible. Okay. Are you a cancer in any other? Or how cancerous are you? Let's see. You're Jupiter's in oh, cancer. Okay. I'll just go through them really quickly. Okay, so sun. Your sun sign's cancer. Moon signs Taurus, your Mercury is in Leo, your Venus is in Gemini, Mars in Taurus, Jupiter in Cancer, and then your Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are Capricorn. So you have a lot of Taurus 
and a lot of Capricorn. You have no Libra, you have no Virgo. You have one Gemini and one Leo. Interesting. Leos are known for being very prideful. But that's like in your... So would you consider yourself oratorial? Oratorical? Oratorical. Meaning like good at words. Do you think you're good at words? Yes. Yeah. I'm, I would say so. I would say not, not that many people believe that. Okay. So the sun, it rules over power, ego. It's the core of your potential and uniqueness as an individual. This is very hoity-toity. So <laughs> this is um, essentially how other people see you, right? Uh, okay. Impressing and influencing others. So cancer, fourth sign of the zodiac, represents the fourth stage in the evolution of man and his place in the universe. Aries is number one. So they must be babies. That makes sense. Because my husband's that. Here, it is the eternal survival. What? What the fuck is this shit? Okay, I'm sorry. I should just read the whole thing. In Cancer. Yeah, I'm confused. What? It says, in Cancer, the need is not one of the individual survival as it was in the first three signs. Here, it is eternal survival through perpetuation of the species. It is the... So I want to make other humans i want to be a human factory it says, is what it's saying it is the sign of fertility and nurture and cancerians oh that's a terrible word have strong identification with these matters in one form or another it doesn't mean that they're all efficient housekeepers or good cooks but they all want to feel part of a family they enjoy feeding others as much as they enjoy feeding themselves they are also ready to supply emotional nurturing by <laughs> mothering everyone who appears to be in need. When upset, they tend to use food as consolation, which in turn results in problems with excess weight. As an offshoot well, of their that's a nail. <laughs> as an offshoot of their sense of familial relationships, they often develop an interest in history and genealogy in general. Um there's one more, there's one more, uh, paragraph. Okay. So it says you set out to accomplish things and one way or another, you want to obtain your goals in spite of your emotional sensitivity, your strong willed, you have no trouble expressing what you want and then finding a way to get it. So just you, so your sign is a crab, right? So like cancer is a crab. It yeah. says just as the crab walks sideways rather than straight ahead, Cancers use an indirect approach in accomplishing their goals. Rather than direct confrontation or request, they are more apt to resort to using emotional appeal. They will get others to cooperate by making them feel like part of the family. But at the slight provocation or threat, the crab quickly hides or retreats into a shell until safer times are at hand. Uh, cancers who feel threatened or suspect their attempts may be unsuccessful often hide their true ambitions until a more comfortable situation occurs. Uh, you react emotionally to everything you experience in life. So before you take physical action, you sort out the practicality of what you're doing and reason things out intellectually. Um, but that's the exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs> it says they wear that's their the hearts. Exact opposite. Uh, they wear their hearts in their okay. sleeves. Um, they succeed in life because their genuine concern for the welfare of others inspires loyalty as well as cooperation. So that's interesting. Okay, so how do you think about this so far? Okay, so it, there are some things that definitely hit on. I do feel well, of course, like... Right. Because it's general, but like the direct confrontation, the hiding. The thing is, I, I don't feel strong-willed. I do like to accomplish goals, but pretty much everybody does. I think everyone I, does I, enjoy accomplishment, yes. <laughs> yes, like I don't think anybody really enjoys direct confrontation. There are a few people that do. I... The one thing that got me was that where it was like, you like to react emotionally. And I'm like, yeah, I do. But then you like to reason things out. What? Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was back and forth. I do feel like I do have a lot of genuine concern for others. I was once told that I would light myself on fire to keep others warm. That's kind of insane. But that's just the type of person that's... that I am. Do you agree with, like, the family the thing? That my mom is. Do you agree with the family thing, like wanting to have a big family? Not not necessarily no. like literally, but like you like honestly, I prefer a smaller group of people that I trust. Got I don't, it. and I don't even consider them like familial, right? Yeah, like, 
I'm yeah. not really super big on family. Yeah, me neither. I'm glad that I'm not a cancer. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I just I don't now uh, that one was like no nah, no that's not really a hit the, at all. The interesting thing that so like I just told you that was your sun sign. That's how yeah. you think others perceive you. So that's not how you p perceive yourself, right? So this is your man. Sign. People need to pin pin down how they feel about me, right? They they pick so a, pick a side. It's interesting that people did say that you would set yourself on fire to keep others warm. So that hit on that correctly. But see, yeah. I don't see you like this. I mean, I see you in certain things, very, very, a very, very small amount of things. I don't see, I wouldn't consider you like a fucking fertility goddess. No offense. Like that's, <laughs> there's very few women in life that I would consider like a sign of fertility and nurture. Like, you wouldn't have me as like a totem in your house, girl. I'd have you, you a totem have children. Yeah, okay, not a, not if I want to have children, but like if I'm trying to be fucking creative and hilarious. Yeah, you well, would be my. You could my be line. my comedian totem. I could oh carve you into a beautiful wooden statue, and then I'd rub you down. Be like, please <laughs> make me funny. Please make me funny. All That's right. what I do. You saying I'm not a fertility goddess, but you're trying to rub me down. Yeah. Which is it? Well, which is it? I'm rubbing you down because you're funny, and that's yeah, what that's I want true, you in. You're trying to get the I luck. want you to impart me with hilariousness. So, yeah, there's very few people that I would go, "Oh, that bitch is fertile as fuck." That's not something that I just like <laughs> see in someone. That's not something I don't know. I guess in the oh. in the same sort of vein, there's a few people like Joe, like my mother-in-law. She. I wouldn't say that she is very fertile, but she is very nurturing. And when I think of a mother figure, I think of her. I don't think of my mom as a, as a mothering figure because she's a badass bitch. But yeah. I think of Joe's mom as like a mothering figure. And I could see that being kind of like, oh, if I were thinking of, you know, a family or something like that, that's what I think of. I don't really worry myself with the idea of fertility. Or anything like that. That's just kind of a weird, outdated thing. I don't think people worry about that too much anymore. No. It's just kind of, it's kind of strange. And okay. So here's the thing. Yeah. I don't, you can tell me if you think this about me, but like the one that really hit, the couple that hit on me really, like what this doesn't sound like how people perceive me at all, mm -hmm. is strong-willed. Okay. And then like. I do think you're strong-willed. I their true ambitions into like a, a more. Uh, appropriate time, those kinds of things. I was like, I've always been told I'm a pushover. That's like what I've been told my whole life. So I'm a pushover. Well, and I also typically don't like achieve goals. You don't I achieve, achieve goals. some goals that I set my mind to, but most of the time people don't look to me as like, oh, she achieves her goals. Well, it says they it's want just, to obtain their goals. It, um, so it yeah. says emotional sensitivity, <laughs> strong willed, no trouble expressing what they want finding a way to get it. I feel like you're more authentic than most people. So I would agree with these things because there's a lot of people that just will not express what they mean at all, like at all. And I'm comparing you to those people. So no, okay. in a spectrum, I would say that you're stronger willed. There's Jessica, if you think that you are a pushover, maybe that's going to be in your moon sign. I have no idea. <laughs> um, I would not say that you're a pushover because why just people have told me that? Like multiple people. So I was thinking in terms of like how are you related to those people? The majority. No. No. Okay. It's been a it's been a, a large group. A large group of people. Interesting. Um, I would say that you're pretty strong willed though. I don't think that you have a trouble you have trouble expressing what you want. I don't think you do. Like I was once a friend told me once I was a human doormat, which sounded like the worst X Men ever. Human doormat. Oh, now I'm just thinking of the Wonder <laughs> Twins powers activating. Oh my um, God, Wonder Twins powers activate. Yeah. I'm the guy that Form of turns into water. Doormat. Oh, the puddle. Oh my God, but that makes yeah, so the much puddle sense. Man. A puddle and then a doormat. Um, but you can't do that because the girl always has to turn into an animal. Not any, this is this is not the point of this. Um, <laughs> Get us back on track. I'm trying. I, you know what? I'm supposed to be the motherly one. I will turn this podcast Thank around. Okay. I would say some of these things are correct and some of them aren't. I don't yeah. think of you as a family sort of person. I don't think of you as like a motherly sort of person. Um, 
I would say that you're strong-willed. I think so. And maybe like in the past you weren't. And then when someone told you that you made steps to correct it and you've been trying to be more strong-willed. So that could be the thing. Um, I do think that you like to befriend people and want harmony. And you think the best way for everyone to get along is to just be friends and like befriend each other. So I think that's apt. But a lot of the other things I don't really agree with. I don't really agree with the other stuff. Um, It does say that cancer, people that are in the sign of cancer are very emotional. Um, And I think you are emotional. I am. Um, I'm offended by that. (laughs) Not like bad emotional. I think I just, I think you're just like, when people say emotional, they always think that it's bad. But I mean, like, in oh, all yeah. sorts of, in all emotions, and happy. and It doesn't and necessarily everything. mean reactionary. It right. just means, like, you feel things deeply. Yeah. Um, so it does say that. So let's move on to the moon. Um, okay. The moon is, like, your, quote, unquote, true self. <clears throat> so moon is in Taurus. This means that... It's a, well, this is exactly what it says. Except in the pursuit of pleasure, those born with the moon in an earth sign, Taurus is an earth sign, are not emotionally spontaneous. They don't nonchalantly accept the responsibility of long-term relationships. Um, so they hesitate to move at all unless they feel they are on solid ground or there is some personal advantage to be gained by their emotional involvement. So, like, very steadfast, don't take things quickly, things like that. Um, As lunar earth sign personalities, those with the moon in Taurus require tangible tangible proof of affection from those with whom they form relationships. Their strong physical appetites push them to gratify their desires whenever they have the opportunity, but never in a reckless manner that threatens their basic security. Uh, Material comforts are important to you. You can become overly concerned with social status. Though they enjoy having the stability of a solid home, they are not necessarily home bodies. I think that's something that goes along for everyone. I think stability and dependability are like the number one traits that have always been like the most important to people. There was like actually a survey. Because it's a survival instinct kind of thing. Yeah. Um, They spend a lot of time and attention on social or economic pursuits instead of routine household or family chores. Uh, Taurus moon personalities do not want to be rushed or forced into commitments. However, once they do make an emotional commitment, they doggedly pursue and hang on to it. It is hard for them to accept when things go wrong, and it may take an even longer time for them to make necessary adjustments to rectify the situation. Their calm and quiet temperament has a stabilizing influence on others, it can give them an aura of self-containment that makes them appear proud or unapproachable. Do you feel that you're unapproachable? No. Okay. Those... I've, like, I always feel like I'm pretty approachable. Yeah. <laughs> Others who break promises or fail to keep their word to them must be prepared to endure the consequences. Would you say that you hold grudges? Yes. <laughs> but that's that's not even, like, that's genetic. Yeah. My, I come from- <laughs> grudge holders that's I genetic was, I that was this. i was meant to be born in taurus moon okay so yeah like apparently they popped me out at that specific time because they they trained <laughs> we trained extensively for this it says they may forgive but rarely forget um some of True. them remember personal insults and disappointments for years <laughs> Oh, I, like, no. This is, like, no savage. It says, wasting precious time bearing grudges that should have long been forgotten. Okay. <laughs> did you get, did you get Chitokin to write this? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. So then it says, um, women with the Taurus moon are self-reliant. Um, you can you you are okay with spending a lot of money in certain areas and then being very frugal in others. Like you're very miserly is literally the word they used in in certain oh, situations. No. Um, it says 
Oh, I don't want to read this. This is fucking weird. Do it. No. It says they are apt to gain materially through marriage. Um, what the hell? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I missed the boat on that one. Yeah, so how do you feel about that moon in Taurus? How do you feel about that one? Okay, so I like the... I don't. I I fucking... don't feel pride. I'm, like I don't well, think I. I don't think I am strong willed enough to exude pride. I think what like, it was I, saying. I don't think I'm unapproachable. I think what it was saying is sometimes you're really quiet, and that can Which come can make off, me seem aloof. That can make you seem prideful, or yes, like unapproachable. Well, the thing is, most of the time, in social situations, I feel awkward, so I talk more. Yeah. So I don't ever, I don't ever think that. Um, I de- like some of the stuff was. Why was some it of the stuff so? Did, why was it sure. so really fucking like? Oh my god, the thing about the grudges that was like such yeah, a fucking grudges. thing. It's like, and I was like, yeah, that's true. I do do that. I do that a lot. I don't. I don't think that like the oh you they're hesitant to move particularly with like it, relationships. Yeah. No. I like I was so bad. I jump into relationships really hard. Anything, friends. Hell like, yeah. Boyfriends, everything. Hell I just yeah. jump in and I'm like fucking plowing through and typically I I move too quickly, honestly. So emotional spontaneity. I have a lot of that. Well, good. Good. I, I mean, maybe not good. Maybe not. Good, yeah, no. It's but... it's not good. I've actually worked on that. Well, that's so good. Where I'm kind that's of excellent. Trying to go toward this, mm-hmm. where I'm more hesitant to move and do things, but I'm actually like super spontaneous. Well, that's good. Um, that's excellent. Uh, the rushed and like forced to do things into commitment. Nah, typically I make a decision to do something and then I do it. I feel like I can because I know so you the so last well. Part is true. I feel like um, I can po- point out which things are correct and which things are not correct. Yeah, I would be curious to see what you have because, like, self reliant. No, I'm actually a pretty codependent person. Um, I like typically try to not do that because I'm, I'm so bad at it. and apt to gain material things through marriage. I don't like to date people because they have stuff. I prefer to date somebody. Just that's why I date a lot of poor. Yeah, people. Yeah, I would not agree with the apt to gain material through marriage. I didn't understand. I would say that you're self reliant. I would most definitely say that you're self reliant, though. I wouldn't say that you're the thing where it says you're you tend to spend lavishly in certain situations and then be very miserly in others. I don't know if that's true or not. You could perceive it's that not to be really. true. I'm pretty bad with money. <laughs> Like, I'm pretty just equally bad with money. Like, I try to save money, but I re- rarely do. Something will come up and be like, oh, you need help with that? Here you go. Like, oh, <laughs> just never. Yeah. Right. Or, oh, hey, thing, we need to get all right. Like, I just, yeah. Yeah. No. I would say that I need to be more miserly. I got you. That's a goal. Yeah. That's an achievement. Be a miser. That's that's a yearly resolution. Yeah. Be like the Subway sandwich artist, you know, with those triangle cheeses. Like, just put, like, two triangle cheeses down. That's what oh I need God. to do, but with my money. Wow. Yeah, I guess so. Um, All right, hit me which one the ones correct. The ones that I think are correct. Um, so, I've never thought that emotionally spontaneous would be something that you... But maybe that's because you've been working on it. I wouldn't say that you're emotionally spontaneous. Um, but that could be because people fucked you over and that's why you hold grudges forever. Um, yeah. so I would say the thing where it says others who break promises or fail to keep their word must be prepared to endure consequences. I don't think that necessarily yes. means like bad things. Like you're going to go out and like, no, go fight that person, but so ran wrap their car. Like but... it's, a, yeah, that was a friend that he enjoys their company. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so I would say. They forgive, but rarely forget. Yes. Um, remembering yes. personal insults and disappointments for years, probably. I feel like that yep. hits you really hard because you just, you hold on to those things and it's hard for you to let go of things. Um, yeah. Particularly when it comes for like, I, I do have that tendency to be like broken promises or nasty things that were said, particularly from someone I would care about. Like I typically am like, oh, I'm fine with that person now. However, I I don't forget that. Like I do, like, eh. 
I do hold grudges. I think it says they tend to spend a lot of time and attention on social or economic pursuits instead of routine household or family chores. Definitely social ones. I, I think that's true. Um, but I think that's true for most people that are yeah. younger. I think people, as they get into their 50s and 60s, they probably enjoy... Ru- well, there's some people that I know really enjoy routines and they have their routine that are younger. But they're not super young. They're typically like... When I say young, I mean like in their 30s. And so they're still in that whole... They just, I guess, graduated early into enjoying a routine. Um, Which I think is why it's so... Um, broad because it's like if you don't hit on social you're gonna hit on economic yeah yeah well or both yeah for sure i it says they tend to spend a lot of time and attention on social or economic pursuits instead of routine household or family chores i would actually say that i probably do more routine household or family chores versus social or economic pursuits i mean i talk a lot and i hang out with my friends a lot but i would say that i mean i do chores every single day and I enjoy them because like, bitch, while I'm doing chores, my coffee is brewing in the morning. I'm just <laughs> literally trying to distract myself so I don't pull the coffee pot off too early and just have coffee all over my counter. I'm just fighting but myself. But no, I'm definitely, I definitely, there are a lot of chores that still need to be done. Like I clean the house, but then the house gets dirty and I let it sit because it's like, oh, let me go ahead and do this thing. Like Twitch. Yeah. Or let me do this thing, which I would consider to be more social stuff. I actually will punish myself if I haven't gotten my chores done and I will force myself to start stream late or do you ground yourself? I punish myself and others. Like I told everyone, I think it was two weeks ago. I was like, I'm so sorry, but like sometimes when I start late or I cancel stream, it's literally to punish myself. And I know I'm also punishing everyone else, but I don't deserve (laughs) to have fun if I haven't gotten my chores done. Because that's how I was grow. I like that's how my parents raised me. I didn't get to go outside if I didn't finish my homework. So it was like, I don't get to stream and do the things that I want to do if I haven't. If there's a lot of stuff that needs to get done, it has to get done. Like I don't deserve to to relax for that time when I need. I have all these other things that I've just been putting off. So yeah, but I punish myself. I mean, it's good, though, because then I get that shit done and I feel good and it's not weighing on my mind anymore. That's why I do yeah. it, because I know that it would just be sitting there weighing on my mind. But okay. That's a good thing. So I'm proud of you. Thank you. I, now I've just been practicing this whole mantra of why not now. And I don't know if you've heard me talk about it before, but it's just like, yeah, if you're waiting for something to be done, like the laundry, why not just go and finish something else? Like, like in the morning when I'm waiting for the coffee to brew, why not just put the dishes that are in the dishwasher away and reload it like for, from the dishes for dinner the night before, like, why not now? So, okay. I'm going to read you Venus. Venus is your social stuff, your relationships, uh, inclinations, things like that. Um, all right. So it's, it's relationships and social interactions at every level. It indicates your romantic marriage partnership uh, val- the things that you value in people in your relationships. Cool. All so right. your Venus is in Gemini. Gemini's, like I told you, are considered to be two faced. Not necessarily in this aspect, but this says individuals with Venus and Gemini are some of the most accomplished flirts in the zodiac. It would be <laughs> a mistake to accuse them of being emotionally shallow. Because other factors can more accurately account for the depth of their emotional commitment. In purely social situations, these individuals are remarkably adept. The influence of Gemini indicates their physical pleasure in relationships is never as great as the intellectual stimulation derived from them. Excellent speakers and ad-libbers, their social instincts are more geared to sharing ideas and picking up all kinds of interesting information than intense physical or emotional encounters. They find inspiration in maintaining a wide variety of relationships with people from different backgrounds and experiences. Why wouldn't everyone find inspiration in that? I mean, I guess unless you're a bigot, because bigots do exist. (laughs) But I'm like, that is that is true. But I feel like that's true for a large portion of people. Yeah. So that's all that it says for Venus and Gemini. As you go down, there's less and less information. Like the two that have the most info are your sun sign and moon sign. Sun, moon. 
And then as you go down, like Pluto being in Scorpio, let's see what it says. Pluto in Scorpio. Let's see if it says Scorpio. Does it just say, get it, girl? <laughs> oh my God. This is terrifying. Okay. Oh, okay. I don't want to read this. Oh, oh my God. God. Okay. What? Oh, I don't want to read this. I don't want to read this. No, it's just not what I normally say. And I've been like clapping to this. And par probably people who actually are no astrology are going to be like, shame. Shame on you. Shame on your wife. Shame on your cow. Shame on what your family. It? Okay, now you got to tell me. Now you got to tell me. Okay. It's going to be okay. I apologize. Okay. I should say there may be a trigger warning regarding abuse. <laughs> so. Uh, Do you want to tell me later? Do you no, want to tell me after? I, I, it, it will literally, it's, it's literally three sentences, but I just want to be like very careful. Okay. Like, okay. All right. Maybe mute for like 30 seconds if you don't want to hear this shit. It says when Pluto transits Scorpio emotional when Pluto transits Scorpio emotional transformations occur that produce a lot of conflict and great change. The great awakening during Pluto Scorpio transit in the 1700s increased church participants, but the overall effect divided the church between those of the old order and new members who wanted change. Scorpio rules kidnapping, sex, and abuse. Public outcry against child abuse and kidnapping and the worldwide spread of AIDS are Examples of Pluto's current transformation of society. Okay, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. It was just yeah, like, it just mentioned those things. And so I was like, all right. But all I was reading was like the kidnapping, sex, and abuse, and then the AIDS and the child abuse. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I've always been told that Pluto and Scorpio is great. But you know what? The public outcry against child abuse and kidnapping, that's good. That's almost as that's good as sexy good. times. So there you go. I don't know yeah. what that has to do with anything. <laughs> 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 like, well, maybe because, you know, kidnapping, you're tying people up. If, if your sex life is good, you might be tying people up. Maybe it's the the, the, the same, the similarity. I have Somebody's going to no unmute right during idea. that. And it's going to be like... I what the fuck is wrong with us? Anyway, I just want to say I'm not an accomplished flirt. You're not. I flirted a lot, but I'm not an accomplished flirt. You don't think flirt. you don't consider yourself an accomplished flirt? Interesting. No. Did I ever tell you about the guy that stuck his hand in my face? Oh. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go on. No, I did my not. Mother effing journey. So there was this guy that I went to um, school with. We were in an acting class together. Yeah. And I was. Uh, madly like in crush with him not in love but I was just like we should definitely you're tall broody you draw comics like we should definitely hang out so he was talking to me a lot one day the teacher didn't show up and so he was like man I just have nothing to do for lunch I have nothing to do for lunch I have nowhere to be and I'm like oh man that sucks mm -hmm. he's like yeah I just have nothing to do I have, no I have nowhere to go and he said like three or four times and I was like I got this he's telling me that we should, you know, make hang out, out on oh, his lunch. Oh, yeah, hang out. Yeah, not make out. And I was yeah. like, yeah, we should. So I went for it. I was like, so you maybe want to grab, you know, coffee? Like, hang out? And he stuck his hand in my face <laughs> and said, I'm afraid I'm going to have to say no to that. Wow. Like, I, like, murder a hobo. Like, that's, it was, it was that kind of thing. That's Holy been my shit. whole life. There was a guy I asked out for coffee once. Maybe I just shouldn't have asked guys out for coffee. Maybe, Maybe they just about that. really hate coffee. But, but I was talking, uh, I was talking to another guy, and we—I thought we were flirting, and I was like, "Hey, you want to go out for coffee sometime?" And he said, "This is inappropriate. You're being inappropriate." What? Yeah, I named that my Tumblr that. Weird. For the longest time, You're when I had a Tumblr, because that was like, appropriate. Yeah, I was a terrible flirt. Ugh. I tried so hard, and I got so far. And in the end, it didn't even matter. Because now you have Shatoken. Gruff. Mr. Gruff. That's what I'm going to call him from yeah. now on. Mr. But Gruff. But I do feel like that's that's true. Like, my previous relationships haven't been as deep because it's mostly just been, like, surface level. I feel like. I do. Like, it may seem like we just dumb as hell and just make dick <laughs> jokes. But we actually have some really, like, stimulating <laughs> conversations that I enjoy that's, a lot. That's good. 
So I want to read you your reading now, which is only a page long. Yeah. Um, and then uh, again, we hope that this reading finds it, it. We hope that it resonates with you. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm going to read it in my sexy voice. Dear Jessica, thank you so much oh, yeah. for seeking my guidance. The first I'll thing, more <laughs> the first thing that comes up when looking at your chart is that you possess all the elements known as fire, earth, air, and water. Having, Isn't that a band? That's you're an, you're an airbender, my friend. Okay, I mean you're an, you're the avatar. Oh my god, I just failed my. I am the class. avatar. You're the avatar. Um, having all the elements in the chart gives you the flexibility to use each element according to the condition and circumstances that you are in, as each element represents different energy or traits. The second thing that I find intriguing in your chart are the two dominating parts that create your versatile personality. You might experience it as a split because it's two sides that could be in conflict with one another, but not necessarily. That is where your awareness kicks in. This is going to be the most vague shit that you've ever heard in your life. Are you ready? Yeah. I'm one ready. part of you is an introvert. You are a family-oriented person. You seek security and belonging to all that you recognize as your world, especially in intimate relationships with your family members, partners, colleagues, so on. It gives you peace knowing you have your routine and comfort zone. It makes you feel safe and satisfied. Anything that jeopardizes those things is considered unwelcome and dangerous. The second part of you is an extrovert. You seek invigorating conversations with a variety of wonderful people called Blossoming Sun. You sp enjoy speaking <laughs> your mind. <laughs> and That's often, the only one. <laughs> That's the only one. <laughs> variety of one person. Um, often feels like you should be the one to have the last say. More than that, on a spiritual level, one of life's biggest lessons for you is to explore new territories, first within yourself, meaning your belief system through learning mixtures of modalities, philosophies, faiths, and beliefs, and then out in the world by traveling and seeing new places and cultures. The way of finding inner harmony is to first recognize that you have these two needs within you. That will help you soften the frustration that might arise while experiencing this struggle, which can also manifest as limitation coming from outside of you. It's not... Oh... It says it can manifest as a limitation coming from outside of you, and it's not the way of harmony lies within you. It takes courage at times to go out of your comfort zone, and I am confident you are doing so. The great self-awareness comes with time after realizing how all the contradicting, cr contradicting parts in us can exist as a whole that serves our greater good and our lives' purpose. That was a bunch of hoity-toity bullshit. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Like it really was like it. So there's a thing I'm, you probably heard of it. Um, it's the Barnum effect or the four effect. I have not heard of that. Well, I've probably heard of it. So and not remembered. It's the tendency to believe in the accuracy of vague generalities about one's personality. Oh, and yes. That's essentially how this works. Yes. Cause it's, an, it's four, four did a psychological study where he basically gave a bunch of psychology students a, list of basically personality traits mm -hmm. and they were all given the exact same list but they were told that it was tailored to them and then they were asked like hey how, how did that accurate. fit you yeah. and they yep and they hit on it and they were like oh yeah it this is me like this is me to a t yeah um but they were all given the exact same thing but it was because it was so general yeah and then it's also known as the barnum effect because of pt barnum Oh. because of, the, of his phrases about how he could sucker people into the circus because he would be extremely personable to them. Yeah. I and mean, they were you can say vague generalities and everything like that. And, and that's, that's pretty interesting. I think, and we'll, we'll touch on this later. We'll, we'll have a topic talking about tarot. Tarot is slightly different from this and it's different because it can actually help you. Like, I don't think astrology really helps you. It doesn't really tell you what to do. Like horoscopes, maybe they tell you what to do, but they're not very helpful. Like they're not helping you process something mentally, meaning like they're not trying to help you work through a problem you have. They're just kind of like, oh, you might find love today. <laughs> It's just like, oh, or they'll just be no. like, you'll experience a great loss. And the thing is, it's subjective validation. So yeah. you're reading that and you're like, oh, I'm going to experience a loss. And you're so looking it for a it. a self-fulfilling process, yeah. like a prophecy. You're basically like, well, whether it's your keys or your grandma, like one of those things, you're going to hit it and you're going to be like, I lost my keys and I couldn't find them for an hour. Yeah. That's what they were talking about. For sure. 
because you're basically looking for that. Absolutely. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Like if that if people like it and it makes them happy, that's more than that's more than okay. But it's definitely it's like the that. Barnum effect, and then it's absolutely confirmation bias. And yes, you know, confirmation bias and like a lot of people that are attracted to astrology have like this deep love of like destiny and predetermination. And that's fine, y'all. I just don't think that it helps. Tarot's a little bit different. We'll get into that on a, on a separate podcast about why I think tarot is different and why it actually helps people. Um, and along with that, like why witchcraft actually helps people. But it's like as astrology, it's so vague. It can apply to anyone if you really think about it. If you like sit there and sit and like just renounce your Aries sign, you're like, hmm, let me just read the Libra horoscope today and just see. Yeah. What, and know. the thing is, I feel like sometimes it's when I worry about it is more when it becomes crippling. Like you had mentioned a vice um, video yeah. about astrology. And I ended up watching it on YouTube because I watched the wrong one. No, so was that was Gavin. that's still a good one, though. Still good. But he mentions at one point the fact that there are some people that are just, you know, I've got to read my horoscope in the morning and then it dictates their whole day. Oh, yeah. And that's kind of like that's not oh, OK. That, that, that does. That would just, you know. Yeah. Make it worry. That's but when as long as it's like not hurting you or anybody else and you're just enjoying yourself like a little bit of fun. Yeah, that's, that's fine. That's but it's when... mostly just cold reading. You just want to make sure cold readings. That's when you just want to make sure that you always realize it's not a see this guy was great at the very end. He was like, I'm confident you're going to go out of your comfort zone. You're doing it already. Just remember that your limitations do not come from the outside of you. They come from inside you and you can free yourself from that. Like you need to realize the external of locus. That idea is not true. Anyone can change their life. You do have limits to how much you can change your life, of course, because, yeah. you know, parts of your life are dictated by other people, whether it be your parents or your boss or whatever. But you or have your money. The, like, yeah, like there's a bunch of different factors. Exactly. But you are in control of deciding what you want to do day in and day out. So having yeah. an internal locus of control is a lot healthier. So don't let horoscopes dictate your day. If you're just doing it for fun, that's cool. I mean, I have a cup that, that says Libra, and it says impatient, which is like legitimately me. I am the most impatient person. I, oh, I'm so bad. <laughs> I was about to like share some very real sexual shit with y'all, but I decided not to. But I do get very impatient I'm about in to bed. Go to eBay and try to find an accomplished flirt mug because I just feel validated. Hell yeah. <laughs> Everyone I flirted with that was uncomfortable, guess what? You were wrong. <laughs> Looking at the master. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I think they're fine. Cold readings can also do go very badly. And just like just like cold readings can go badly, your horoscope can also be not it, it can still manage even with its vagueness, it can still manage to be wrong. You can be like, what yeah, the exactly. Fuck, because they're essentially just using general ideas and statements mm -hmm. to try and hit on things. Yeah, and it's fascinating when you think about how they how they do it. But I was reading an article once, and it was like, if astrology is true, if it is the divination of the stars, then all of these astrologers should be able to have the exact same thing. Every single paper that has a horoscope should say the exact same thing, maybe with different wording. Yeah. But they don't. Right. Like the, the cancer for one is going to be different than the cancer for the other. And they also always have like for entertainment purposes right at the top. Oh, that's a legal thing. Yeah. That's a legality yeah, because, thing. Because, you know, there was, they got to make sure that you know that. Yeah. There it's was, the same thing with like TV psychics. Oh, for it's sure. It's like print TV psychics. Print TV. Mm -hmm. That's that's just print. But, you know, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this this podcast about learning yeah. more about what's what is the real Jess plan <laughs> and what is the fake cancerous Jess plan. That just that sounds all kinds of wrong, but also I, I hope they learned made way too much bad. about my sex life. Yeah, <laughs> I think that that was something that I was unaware of that was going to happen today. Do you want me to share something that about my sex life that might make them feel better? I mean, you feel better. I mean, no, I'm good. I like the fact that you said might make them feel better. <laughs> you know. 
Like somebody's just like, I wish the blossoming sun would say something about our sex life. I feel so down today. When, you well, just DMing here, people with positive one sex One time I had tips. sex with a person and they cried on me afterwards. <laughs> you that's like my I one always card. laugh at that when you tell me. That's, that's my one card. And then they, they prostrate themselves to Jesus while still lying on my naked body. Which is dope. <laughs> you just dope. were so quiet for so so many more seconds than I thought. I was just thinking it's like I was just thinking that is is that putting the deity and BDSM? Is that what the D stands hey. for? Hey. I was also just trying to figure out like how I was like prostrate themselves on you. I was just like imagining this guy like planking <laughs> on you essentially. essentially so my brain kind of went. You to went a, correctly. My brain. You had it weird idea. And I, that's why I got quiet. Sometimes, that, but you know what? I got quiet because I seem proud, aloof, and fu- what was it? <laughs> unapproachable. Was last one? Unapproachable. Yeah. That's right. What Sorry that I seem so unapproachable. There. I'm so glad okay. I learned that. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening. Yeah. Bye. Read your horoscope. Have oh, yeah. Learn about your astrology. Yeah. See if you're cancerous or not. The original G. The O astrology. Also, see if your your Scorpio's in Pluto. (laughs) Hey. Sucks for you if it isn't. I'm out. (laughs) Bye. Bye.